Sixth grade, module six, lesson seven, classwork. The mean as a balance point. In lesson three, Robert gave us an informal interpretation of the center of a data set. In lesson six, Michelle developed a more formal interpretation of center as a fair share mean, a value that every person in the data set would have if they all had the same value. In this, le this lesson, Sabina will show us how to interpret the mean as a balance point. Example one, Sabina wants to know how long it takes students to go to school. She asks two students how long it takes them to get to school. She, it takes one student one minute and the other student 11 minutes. She represents these values on a ruler, putting a penny at one inch and another at 11 inches. Sabina thinks that there might be a connection between the mean of two data points and where they balance on a ruler. She thinks this may mean, she thinks the mean may be the balancing point. Sabina shows her data using the dot plot. So here we have the student who takes one minute to get to school, and here's the student who takes 11 minutes. And it goes from 1 to 12 because we're um, on a ruler. Uh, so Sabina decides to move the penny at 1 inches, at 1 inch to 4 inch. So she moves this one over here to 4 inches, and the penny from 11 inches to 8 inches. So this one to there. So here we added three, and here we subtracted three. Noting that the movement for the two pennies is in the same distance, but in opposite directions. So one is adding three, one was subtracting three. Sabina thinks that if the two data points move the same distance, but in opposite directions, the balancing point on the ruler does not change. Do you agree with Sabina? So I would agree because if we're moving the same distance, we're doing equal things to both sides, then yes, um, th I mean, it is even. So I would agree with her. Sabina continues by moving the penny at four inches to six inches. So now she moves this one to six inches and moves it to keep the ruler balanced at six inches. How far should Sabina move the penny from eight inches? So she added two. So to do the same thing here, we would need to subtract two to make it even. So the mean here, or the balancing point, would be six. So she moves it two to the left. Lands on, so it landed on six. So that's how they found their balancing point. So we went from one over to six and 11 over to six. So we found the mean or the balancing point on both of them, but here it took plus five and here we did minus five. Exercises one through two. Now it is your turn to try balancing two pennies on a ruler. Number one, tape one penny at two and a half inches on your ruler. So if you have a ruler, get that out and you don't necessarily need to tape it, but just set it on two and a half inches. So I'm gonna draw a ruler. And I'm gonna put my penny at two and a half inches. So there's my penny, two and a half inches. Where should a second penny be, penny be taped so that the ruler will balance at six inches? So it's saying it wants to balance right here. So how far do we need to go? So there's a half, one, two, three. So we have one, two, three, and a half. So we need to go three and a half this way. One, two, three, and a half, which would put us right here at nine and a half. So nine and a half inches would make it balance right here at six. B, how far is the penny at two and a half inches from six inches? So at two and a half inches from six inches, it's three and a half inches. Three and a half inches from six. And how far is the other penny from six inches? Well, it's also three and a half. They're both the same distance. 
C. If six inches is the mean of the two, or is six inches the mean of the two locations of the pennies? Explain how you know this. So yes, six inches is the mean. How do we know this? Well, the distance the penny, the penny that's below six inches is equal to the distance of the penny that is above six inches. So yes, because they both. They are both equal distances from six inches. Number two, move the penny that is at two and a half inches to the right two inches. Where will the penny be placed? So move the penny at two and a half inches right here to the right, two inches. So that would be, here's one, two. So that's still at the half point, so it'll be at four and a half inches. B, what do you have to do with the other data point, the other penny, to keep the balance point at six inches? So what would we have to do with the other penny? Uh, this one. To keep the balance at six at six inches, well, we'd have to also move it in the opposite direction two inches. So I'm going to move it one, two inches. So to keep the balance point here at six, we would have to move this penny to seven and a half. So move it to the left two inches or the opposite direction, opposite of the other one, because this was right two inches, we're gonna move it left two inches. What is the mean of the two new data points? Is it the same value as the balance point of the ruler? Well, since we moved them both in, this, um, in opposite directions the same amount of times, the balance point stays the same, or the mean stays the same. So the new mean is still six. So the mean is still six. Is still six. Is it the same value as the balance point of the ruler? Um, yes, it is the same value. Let's see. Yes, it is the same value. Example two, balancing more than two points. Sabina wants to know what happens if there are more than two data points. Suppose there are three students. One student lives two minutes from school and the other student lives nine minutes from school. If the mean for all three students is six minutes, she wonders how long it takes the third student to get to school. Using what you know about distances from the mean, where should the third penny be placed in order for the mean to be six inches? Label the diagram and explain your reasoning. So we need to add a third penny. So right now the two here is uh, four away from the six and this nine is three away from the six. So we need these to be even in order to be balanced. So right now we have a four and a three. So I need to somehow make this into four. So if I put a penny over here on seven, then the distance is only one, so now it's balanced. I have a total of four distance here and three and a one that totals up to four distance there. So our other penny would have to be on seven. So let's say the third penny would be placed on seven to keep the balance even on each side or equal on each side. Exercises three through six. Imagining, imagine you are balancing pennies on a ruler. 
Suppose you place one Benny each at three inches, seven inches, and eight inches on your ruler. Sketch a picture of the ruler. At what values do you think the ruler will balance? Okay, so let's draw our ruler first. Suppose you place one penny at three, seven, and eight. Um, at what value do they think the ruler will balance? Mark the balance point with a symbol zero. So we're just kind of estimating. So where do we think it'll balance? I think it's going to balance somewhere around maybe six or five, maybe five and a half. So I think it's going to balance around there because we have two pennies over here and only one on this side. So I think it's going to kind of even out and be closer to six. What is the mean of three, seven, and eight? Does your ruler balance at the mean? So let's see. Here, the distance between three and six, so that's three. From 6 to 7 is 1, and from 8 to 6 is 2. So those add up to 3. So the mean would be 6, because we have 3 on each side. So does your ruler balance at the mean? So yes. Our ruler balances, let's say, at 6. Three is let's say the distance from three to six. Three to six is three, and then distance from seven to six is one. And the distance from 8 to 6 is 2. So they balance because the 1 and the 2 add up to be the same distance as the 3. OK, show the information from part A on a dot plot. Mark the balance point with a symbol triangle. OK, so we had 1 at 3. One at seven, and one at eight. And then the balancing point was right there. D, what are the distances on each side of the balance point? How does this mean the mean is six? So that's kind of what we explained up here. So I would just say the distances, I would write that back and write that down there. How does this prove that the mean is six? We can say the mean is six because the total of the distances on either side of 6 is 3. Number 4. Now suppose you place a penny each at 7 and 9 inches on your ruler. So we put a penny at 7 and 9. Draw a plot of those two pennies. B, estimate where to place a third penny on your ruler so that the balance is at six. So we want the balance to be right there. We know that the distance here is one from seven to six. The distance from nine to six is three, so those add up to the distance is four. So if we want it to balance at six, we need a distance of from four from the other side. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So it would be at 
two because there's it only says we're adding one penny so estimate where to place the penny so mark the balancing point we already did that c explain why your answer in part b is true by calculating the distances of the points from six are the totals of the distances on either side of the mean equal okay so the distance from seven to six was one so let's say the distance between seven and six is one the distance between uh, nine and six was three. Together, these are four from six. So the distance is four from six. So then on the other side, the um, distance to the left needed to be four from six. So the distance to the left oops. left also needed to be four from six, so that took us to two. So it kind of explains what we did there. You might be able to word it a little bit better if, or in a different way that makes sense to you. Number five, is the concept of the mean as the balance point true if you put multiple pennies on a single location on the ruler? So it's asking, is the mean of a balance point true if you put multiple pennies on a single location? So yes, it would be true because if you're stacking pennies or you have more than one data point at the same location on the data plot, it's still applicable. So let's say yes, you can stack pennies or have more than one. one data point at the same location. So let's do um, some examples. So suppose you place two pennies at seven inches and one penny at nine inches on your ruler. Draw a plot representing these three pennies. So we drew the plot. B, estimate where to place a fourth penny on your ruler so that the ruler balances at six. So we want it to balance here at six. And mark the point on the dot above. Okay, so where do we think we would have to put something to balance it at six? Well, I know that here, that distance from seven to six is one and one, but there's two of them. So kind of like how we were talking, yes, we can have two in the same spot. And the distance from nine to six is three. So together, the distance here is equal to five. So if I wanted it to balance at six, I would need to go over one, two, three, four, five, and my penny would have to be on one if my mean is going to balance at six, because the distance here is five. So the total distance of the ones on the left, five, are equal to the distances of the totals on the right. So let's explain how we did that. So the total distances on both the right and left side of the mean six is five. So they are equal.
All right, example three, finding the mean. What if the data on a dot plot were one, three, and eight? Will the, balance, will the data balance at six? If not, what is the balance point and why? So we wanna know if it's one, three, and eight, is it gonna balance at six? Well, I'm gonna say probably not because here the distance is only two and then the distance from three to six is not five, it is three. And the distance from one to six is five. So this distance here is eight, and this is only two. So the mean is definitely not six. Um, so no, the data is not balanced on each either side. So what would it be? Um, well, let's try maybe if we move it down to instead of six, it's going to have to be closer to one and three. So maybe let's try four. Let's see if four would work. So here the distance is one, and here the distance would be three. So that's four, and the distance from eight to four is four. So yes, the balance point would be four, or the mean. The balance point is four. Exercise seven. Use what you've learned about the mean to answer the following questions. Recall from lesson six that Michelle asked 10 of her classmates for the number of hours they usually sleep when there is school the next day. Their responses in hours were these hours. It's hard to balance 10 pennies. Instead of actually using pennies in a ruler, draw a dot plot that represents the data set. So we have one, two, oops. I'm gonna count up the eights first. So we have one, two, three, four eights. Uh, one ten, two tens. two elevens, a nine, and a seven. Okay, so we need to find our mean. So I'm gonna guess our mean's probably, nine is in the middle there, so let's see. If we, the distances here are all one, so that would add up to four, and then the distance here would be two, so together these are six. And then we have distances there, are one. And then we have two of those, so those are each two. So that also all adds up to six. So nine is our balance point. So the dot plot shows us that nine is a balance point. So let's say a balance point of nine would mean The total of the distances to the left is six because we had two plus one plus one plus one plus one, and the distances to the right the total of the distances to the right is also six because we had two plus two plus one plus one is equal to six. So there are some different ways that you can find out balance points using things like rulers or dot plots, and eventually we're just gonna start finding the mean by using the formula.